you can hear me, can I get some car honks or light flashes? Awesome. Welcome to Stony Creek United Methodist Church. My name is Pastor Michael. I'm happy to see you all here on this rainy day. And welcome to all of our friends who are joining us via Facebook online. Um, a couple of quick things before we get to our service. Just a reminder, we are continuing our outreach project with Bishop Elementary. Uh, we are still collecting uh, supplies and donations, uh, things like hand sanitizer, tissues, sharpies, dry erase markers, composition notebooks, retractable ballpoint pens, Ziploc bags of all sizes, pencil boxes or pouches, bleach wipes, watercolor paints, Crayola markers, dry erase board cleaner, two pocket folders, brown paper lunch bags, and Play-Doh. Um, you can also uh, make a cash donation um, and place it in the offering plate and mark it on the envelope Bishop School Outreach um, if you would prefer to do that. But we appreciate all the donations that have already been made and are looking forward to being able to have a positive impact uh, with Bishop Elementary to help our teachers and our students in what is sure to be a, not just an unusual year, but a challenging one. Um, do you have any announcements? I wanted to remind people, or just share, that Jane and Lynn Helzerman have a special anniversary coming up on October 29th. They are going to be celebrating 60 years of wedded bliss, I think. So <laughs> <laughs> don't tell them I said that. That's it. Awesome. Uh, also, we will, uh, I will be uh, having a Advent Bible study coming up. Uh, there will be more information on that in the next week or so, but there will be an online option through Zoom as well as an in-person option. Uh, the Zoom will be in the evening and the in-person will be during the day, uh, but we have to limit the number of uh, people uh, so that we don't put anyone's health at risk for the in-person so when I have more information on that, I'll let you know how we're going to uh, do like sign up registration uh, so we keep our numbers where they need to be. Um, I think that is all. I'm sure I'm forgetting something, but if I think of it, I will let you know. Um, but let us now come to a, an attitude and a time of worship. Let us open our hearts to God and join together in praising him in our service. I'm Barb Makarovich. I'll be your liturgist for this morning. If you could join me in our call to worship. The grace of Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and also, also with, with you. Why are our souls cast down? Why are our souls disquieted within us? We put our hope in God and will praise Him. God is our eternal without ceasing. We will put our faith in you, O oh God, to protect us from the monsters of fear and doubt. And our opening hymn this morning is Leave a Story to Tell the Nations.
now for our opening prayer. Forgiving God from you, you who we cannot hide, you will always seek us out and be with us no matter where we go. You desire for us to also seek out you and to share your love with the world. We ask you now, O oh God, to be present with us in this time of worship and praise as we celebrate your love and grace for all creation. All of this we lift to you, O oh God. Amen. And our next hymn is Death of Mercy. scripture reading today comes from Proverbs chapter 3 verses 21 through 26. The true security. My child, do not let these escape from your sight. Keep sound wisdom and prudence and they, they will be light for your soul and adornment for your neck. Then you will walk on your way securely and your foot will not stumble. If you sit down, you will not be afraid. When you lie down, your sleep will be sweet. Do not be afraid of sudden panic or of the storm that strikes the wicked. For the Lord will be your confidence and will keep your food from being caught, your foot from being caught. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Friends, God tells us over and over in the Bible not to be afraid. Our gifts this morning are one way that we trust God even in a world that keeps telling us to be afraid. We let go of thinking that we are on our own and live each day in graceful dependence on God. We will now collect our offering.
All right, if you would please join me now in our doxology. Almighty and most merciful God, from you comes every good and perfect gift. We give you praise and thanks for all of your mercies. Your goodness has created us. Your bounty has sustained us. Your discipline has chastened us. Your patience has borne with us. Your love has redeemed us. Give us a heart to love and serve you and enable us to show our thankfulness for all of your goodness and mercy by giving up ourselves to your service and cheerfully submitting in all things to your blessed will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. I invite you now to a time and an attitude of prayer. Holy God, you bless us beyond any measure that we could have earned on our own. It is only through the salvation that is secured through your son's sacrifice that we can be called your children. We give you thanks for all of the blessings that we receive in our lives. We give you thanks for good health, for the opportunity to celebrate anniversaries and birthdays and other milestones in our lives. And we give you thanks for finding, helping us find ways to come together, even in a time of a global pandemic that is affecting so many people in so many different ways. And Lord, you taught us to bring everything to you in prayer. So we also today bring to you the things that are weighing on us, like the health and safety and well-being of those that we love as well as those that we do not know, and even our enemies, as you taught us to love our neighbors. God, we pray for those who are struggling with their health, whether physically, emotionally, or mentally. We give you thanks and ask that you continue to watch over all of those who serve in the healthcare process, who are working so diligently, continuously, to not only help heal, to also help find new ways to heal. We give you thanks for those who are working so diligently, especially in regards to this pandemic. And we pray that their efforts will not be in vain and that we can curb the path that this pandemic continues to take. God, we also give you thanks for all of those who work so hard to keep us safe in this world. From all of those who serve in our military and armed forces, to our firefighters and police officers, our first responders, and so many more. God, we ask that you would guide them in all that they do in their words and their actions. We ask that you would watch over them and keep them safe and strong amid the conflict that continues around this globe. And Lord, for those who are so far away from us, we pray that they may be able to return home soon, that we could begin to see an end to that conflict. We know that through only your peace can that be achieved, but that you call us to work with you in spreading that peace around the world. Empower us, brighten our hearts, call us to the work you would have us do. We also pray for every living thing, every person, every nation in this world. God, we pray that all of those in leadership, regardless of what level they may serve, that you would touch their hearts and minds, 
inspire them to work together with others and for peace and for the betterment for all of humanity, not just a select few. Help us to truly live into being your children. May we lead with love and mercy and grace always. All of these things, as well as those we keep quietly on our own hearts and minds, we lift you this day in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now, with the confidence of children of God, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us prepare for the Lord's coming by putting aside our fears and repenting of our sins. If you would join me in our prayer of confession for this morning. O oh God of second chances, we come to you again seeking your forgiveness. Too often we try to hide from you and from the work you have called us to do. We shy away from sharing the good news of your Son, Jesus Christ, with those who need to hear it the most. We ask that you will strengthen us and forgive us for those shortcomings, O oh God and help us to seek you out rather than trying to hide away. Amen. Please take a few moments now for silent prayer and confession. Beloved children of God, fear not. The grace of God appears, bringing salvation to all. Our sins are forgiven. It is the will of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own, zealous for good deeds, all to the glory of God, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. The affirmation of faith today is from the Apostles' Creed, the ecumenical version, which we could read in unison. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy universal church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our next scripture reading comes from Romans chapter 8, verses 37 through 39. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God and Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now we'll join in singing Lonely the Boat. 
And we actually are missing the last part of each verse, so I invite you to sing with the words that you have, um, and I apologize for the error in the bulletin. Be a little unfamiliar, but when our primary scripture reading for the day is Jonah in the boat, this God go with us. Our reading, our third reading for today, comes from the book of Jonah, chapter 1, verses 1 through 17. And this section is titled Jonah Tries to Run Away from God. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, some son of Ammonite, saying, Go at once to Nineveh, that great city. And cry out against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah set out to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid his fare and went on board to go with them to Tarshish, away from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord hurled a great wind upon the sea, and such a mighty storm came upon the sea that the ship threatened to break up. Then the mariners were afraid, and each cried to his God. They threw the cargo that was in the ship into the sea to lighten it for them. Jonah, meanwhile, had gone down into the hold of the ship and had lain down and was fast asleep. The captain came and said to him, 
What are you doing sound asleep? Get up, call on your God. Perhaps the God will spare us a thought so that we do not perish. The sailors said to one another, come, let us cast lots so that we may know on whose account this calamity has come upon us. So they cast lots and the lot fell on Jonah. Then they said to him, tell us why this calamity has come upon us. What is your occupation? Where do you come from? What is your country? And of what people are you? I am Hebrew, he replied. I worship the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. Then the men were even more afraid and said to him, what is this that you have done? For the men knew he was fleeing from the presence of the Lord because he had told them so. Then they said to him, what shall we do to you that the sea may quiet down for us? For the sea was growing more and more tempestuous. He said to them, pick me up and throw me into the sea. Then the sea will quiet down for you. For I notice because of me that this great storm has come upon you. Nevertheless, the men rode hard to bring the ship back to land, but they could not, for the sea grew more and more stormy against them. Then they cried out to the Lord, Please, O Lord, we pray, do not let us perish on account of this man's life. Do not make us guilty of innocent blood for you, O Lord. Have done it as it pleased you. So they picked Jonah up and threw him into the sea, and the sea ceased from its raging. Then the men feared the Lord even more, and they offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made vows. But the Lord provided a large fish to swallow up Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. If you would please join me again in an attitude of prayer. All seeing, all knowing, and all loving God, we come before you now seeking your presence and peace. We ask that you calm our hearts, quiet our minds, and block the distractions of our fears. We ask these things that we might focus instead on you and your message for us in this time and your message for the world. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts together in this place be pleasing in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, we are now in our third week of our sermon series, Things That Go Bump in the Bible. Our first week, we talked about monsters on land and in our dreams. Last week, we entered the depths of the ocean and the depths of our fears. Today, we stay in the water, but much closer to the surface and try to discover what we are really afraid of. Last week, I spoke about as humans, we fear the unknown because it brings us to the reality that we are not in control or may not have power in a given situation. And that's a hard thing to admit. We're human. We are the dominant species, at least in our own minds often. We have scripture that tells us that God placed humanity over creation to care for it, such as Psalm 8. So it's easy to see why we like to think that we are in control. We have been granted free will. We are able to make decisions. In light of that, it's not really a far jump over time to get used to the idea that we are in full control of our lives and everything in them. Some scholars have even said that as humans, we have an incredible arrogance about us and our views of our control in the world. But I think sometimes, even though it may be hard, we can admit that we are not always in control or that we believe that there are other forces at work in our world. Let us look back again at our third scripture reading about Jonah to get a little bit more insight on this. Now, I have to be honest, this is one of my favorite stories in the Bible, partially because of the Veggie Tales movie of the same name. I am a big kid and I like cartoons. I don't know what to tell you. And while I acknowledge, though, that the VeggieTales version of some of the stories in scriptures are not always 100% in line with the text in the Bible, I do feel that they still get the overall message right. And besides, how can you not love a talking tomato and cucumber? As long as they're not on your counter. Anyways, back to our scripture. 
we enter at God commanding Jonah to go and speak out against the wicked and evil city of Nineveh. As you may have guessed, Jonah was a prophet of God, and he went around sharing God's message to the different intended people as God instructed him. But this time, rather than follow God's command, Jonah goes the opposite direction, quite literally. But why? Why does he do this? Is he afraid of God? Is he afraid of Nineveh and its wicked people? Well, our scripture only says that Jonah set out to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. Now, the VeggieTales version shows Jonah as not wanting to deal with the evils and horrors of Nineveh. It also portrays him as believing that the people there are not only unlikely to change their ways, but that they are not worthy of God's forgiveness even if they did. So Jonah tries to run away from God and the responsibility that God has given to him. And that's where things get interesting. Because you see, Jonah tries to escape by getting on a boat headed far, far away from Nineveh and God. Or at least he thinks so. And while on the boat, a great storm rises up and tosses the boat around like a child might a small toy in the bathtub. And the poor sailors are panicked, and rightfully so. They start praying to their gods and throwing cargo overboard, trying to regain control of their ship. And the whole time, Jonah is down in the hold, taking a nap. A nap. During a storm of what I can only assume was especially rough and life-threatening, given the descriptions we have in Scripture. And this guy is fast asleep, while everybody else in the boat is trying to just survive and get through this. I have to say, in that light, Jonah doesn't seem like such a great guy at the moment. So they finally go down to the hole where he is, and they wake him up, and they figure out that he's the reason for the storm. He even tells them that he is trying to run away from God. And they all think he's insane, of course, and the sailors continue to panic, trying to figure out what can they possibly do to appease God and save their lives and their ship. And then something kind of surprising happens. Jonah tells them to throw him overboard to appease the storm. And at first they resist. But when things begin looking even worse and worse, they pick him up and overboard he goes. And literally as soon as they do, the storm quiets. We are told they recognize the power of God and begin to make sacrifices to him and promise to serve him. And everything's good, right? End of story. Jonah swims to shore. Everyone lives happily ever after, right? Now, uh, this is the part where the theme from Jaws would probably start playing. While Jonah did not meet his fate, though, at the jaws of a shark like the victims in the movie Jaws, God did send a great fish or whale or sea creature of some kind to swallow him whole. And that's pretty darn scary, if you ask me. Can you even fathom that? You're treading water or even swimming along, and you happen to look down and see a huge dark hole coming up at you from below. And you realize that you cannot swim fast enough to get out of its way. It's only a matter of a few seconds, and you're done. I don't know about you, but that is especially terrifying. And even though the scripture passage does not give any insight to what Jonah was feeling, I can't believe it was good. I don't get the impression that even back then people were getting swallowed whole by large whales or fish on a regular basis. Even if he recognized God's hand being active in the moment, human fear had to take over him at some point in this nightmare. Now, nowhere have I been able to find any indication that after God set Jonah free from the whale or fish and again called him to go to Nineveh and deliver his message, did Jonah do what God asked out of fear? We're just told that he went out and did what God told him to do. And I think that's really interesting because I'm guessing most of us, if we had been swallowed whole by some great sea creature because we disobeyed God, 
would not falter again given the chance and at least partially out of fear. I'm thinking the threat of being swallowed up by a whale or giant fish only needs to really happen once to a person to take hold with them. So is that what we should be afraid of? Should we be afraid of our God? Well, there is scripture that offers that idea. And I'm not saying that we do not have some fear of God, but there's a difference between a healthy fear of God and doing things out of coercion because you fear for your life and well-being. So what are we really afraid of? Are we really afraid of God? Are we afraid of perceived dangers in following God's call to us? Are we afraid of failing in those calls and somehow disappointing God and ourselves? Or is it just really a fear of a lack of control over our lives and our destinies? What are we really, truly, in the depths of our very being afraid of? Well, I think any and all of those are possible answers for almost any person. Obviously, as humans, we live this human existence. There may not be one universal answer to this question of fear. We all have our, our differences. For some, the fear is over a lack of control. For others, it may be that fear of failure. For others, still, it may be a fear driven by a lack of trust. These are all normal fears that almost everyone will experience at some time or another in their lives. But as I think about this scripture and the book of Jonah in general, something really jumps out at me. Jonah was called by God to tell the people of Nineveh to change their ways. God is giving them a second chance. Just like God gives us a second chance through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. So in a way, I would argue that Jonah was being called by God to go and evangelize to the people of Nineveh. Now, obviously, his message was not about Jesus, because this is well before that time in history. But it was a message about God's love. And I know that might sound kind of funny, because the message talks about the wicked ways of the people but remember what else it says. Go to Nineveh, that great city, and speak out against it. I am aware of how wicked its people are. Did you hear the key phrase there? I am aware. Think about it. If God didn't love the people, would God even care to pay attention to them? Would God be aware of their wickedness? Would God bother to send a prophet to share that message if he did not love them and want them to change. Personally, I don't think God would do any of that if God did not feel love for the people. And you know what the best part of that message is about God's love? God's love means we do not have to be afraid. God's love means that we don't have to fear death. God's love means that we don't have to fear eternal suffering. God's love means that we do not have to fear the evils and the dark places in this world. Now, does that mean we should live our lives without any fear? Probably not. While it's a nice idea to live that boldly through our faith and trust in God, I think as long as there is evil in our world, it would be irresponsible to live life without any fear or caution. But we can find opportunities to live without fear and do something bold in the world. Have you ever wanted to share your faith with someone, but maybe you weren't quite sure where to start? That is an opportunity to fight our fears and do something bold. And I don't mean drag them kicking and screaming to church. While kidnapping is definitely a bold move, that's a little beyond what I'm talking about. But you could be bold and ask them to come to church with you. And it's okay if they say no. At least you ask. If you never ask, they can never say no, but they can never say yes either. You can be bold by offering to 
help a neighbor with work around the house. And I know right now in the pandemic, that's a little bit more challenging. But you can be bold by spending time with those who are not able to get out and travel. And again, even right now in a pandemic via the phone, a phone call can go such a long way to helping people feel connected. You can be bold by getting more active in the missions and work of this church. Again, we're not able to do all the things we normally would, but there is still stuff going on. And there are still a lot of opportunities to be involved in that mission. There are countless ways that we can be bold and push against the fear we have in our lives. Fear is an immensely powerful thing. Look at the story in Luke when Peter denies knowing Jesus three different times. Jesus told him he would do it, but Peter swears he never will. And then in that terrifying moment, when the teacher was taken away and everything seemed to be falling apart, fear took over Peter and he denied the man he had come to follow and respect and love. So we should not be ashamed of our fear, but we do need to fight against it. We cannot let our fears drive us away from God as Jonah did. It can lead to even scarier realities. But we need to also remember that if we do falter and find ourselves running from God, we can never escape God's love. God will still be with us in those times when things look their worst. Because God loves us. Now, I want to be clear, in this time of pandemic and the fear of catching this virus, that is a reasonable fear to have. And while we can hold confidence in our God, God giving us free will also gives us the ability to think logically and responsibly about how we interact with people, how we can keep ourselves and others safe. So please do not hear this message about fighting against fear as some endorsement of ignoring this virus. That is not my intention. God gives us the tools to be responsible in how we act in our world. But I'm going to ask you to do something today. I want you to do something bold. I want you to reach out to that neighbor who might need help might be lonely, who might be struggling all on their own. I want you to reach out to the friend that you have wanted to invite to come to worship at our church. I want you to share your faith in a loving way. Do not let fear overtake you, and please always remember that God is always with us. God is all-powerful and can help us conquer the fears in our lives. So be bold and open yourself to God so that the fears can be defeated. Amen. If you would join me in our closing song, Blessed Assurance.
Christ. Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither life nor death, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Never forget what really matters so that you may live a pure and blameless life until Christ returns. May you always be filled with the fruit of your salvation, those good things that are produced in your life by Jesus Christ. For living this way will bring much glory and praise to God. Go now in peace and serve the Lord. Amen.